It's supposed to be a badge of honor to reach number two in the AP poll during the regular season. But in 2007, it was a mark of death. This is the curse of number two. October 6th, 2007. At 7.09 p.m., number two USC kicks off to Stanford. It's the first road game for the Cardinal, who've lost their first three conference games by an average of 30 points. The Trojans are favored to win by 41. Bo McNally of Stanford picks off USC quarterback John David Booty with 36 seconds left to play and sealing the win for Stanford. The upset is called an upset for the ages. In reality, it's the beginning of a bloodbath that will confound college football authorities for a decade. We wrote off that Stanford win as a fluke. A couple weeks later, our office felt this couldn't be a coincidence. A week after USC's loss, new number two Cal falls to unranked Oregon State, even though the Bears have the ball in field goal range when time runs out. Just five little days later, new number two South Florida falls to unranked Rutgers, failing to gain even a single yard on their final two drives. You have to understand how rare it is for the number two team in the country to lose to a team that's not even ranked in the top 25. In the 10 seasons between 1996 and 2005, it had only happened once. And then for it to happen three times in a row, I, I just never seen anything like it. When Boston College took over as number two, this time in week nine, the authorities were ready. So this was a good Virginia Tech team. And at the start of the fourth quarter, it looked like we were gonna lose another number two. With less than three minutes to play, you have a Matt Ryan touchdown pass, a successful onside kick, and then another Matt Ryan touchdown pass. BC wins the game 14 to 10. We all felt so relieved, like it had to be over. But it was only just beginning. Though Ryan was able to save his team against the number eight Hokies, Boston College met the same fate as USC, USF, and Cal a week later, this time against unranked Florida State. After Oregon lost to Arizona in week 12, I noticed there was one team the number two killer never touched. In the midst of this cursed season, LSU spent six weeks ranked number two and faced four unranked opponents themselves. They won each of those games quite easily. Everyone knows the LSU's mascot name is Mike. So were the coaches at Oregon State and Arizona, but also the quarterback at Rutgers in 2007. I've heard this theory and, and frankly, I think it's ridiculous. Michael is the fourth most common male name in the United States. Of course, it's gonna pop up on a lot of teams. The referee in the Stanford USC game, Mike Batlin. Yet another number two lost in week 13, but authorities do maintain that there was no foul play in number three Missouri's win over the Jayhawks. I mean, it's Kansas. And attention quickly turned to the final regular season game for number two, as 10-1 West Virginia faced 4-7 and seven Pitt on December 1st. We'd picked up a pattern by then. The number two killer liked to work at night, at least Eastern time. And it liked to go after victims who hadn't been ranked that high in at least 60 years, if ever. And the killer did not rely on secretly good teams to get the job done. That was probably the most baffling aspect. You didn't see these upsets give the unranked teams any momentum. The Beavers were the only one who won their next game after beating number two. These weren't excellent teams that were underranked at the time. Oregon State would be the only team to finish ranked in the final poll. The rest of the teams would lose at least five games apiece. Pitt definitely wasn't an excellent team. We knew what might happen. We just hoped it wouldn't. But the number two killer had saved his masterpiece for the season finale. Pat White was held to 91 yards and never scored. Steve Slayton and Noel Devine, 22 yards total on 16 carries. Nobody had held Rich Rodriguez to single digits since the 2003 season. And then they got stoned by a pit team that had given up 44 points to Virginia. That gave LSU the number two ranking before the national championship. Killer never showed up, of course. 
And who was it that called the West Virginia Pitt game? Mike Patrick. In 2008, everything went back to normal. A number two team didn't lose to an unranked team until 2011. Since then, it's stayed a rarity. I still have no idea where the number two killer went, or if there even was a number two killer. But some think the killer may simply be waiting to strike again. Look at 2006. A number two team loses to an unranked team twice. Th that's just the warm up. Now look at 2016. Two losses by a number two team to an unranked team. I'm telling you, man, 2017 is gonna be the killer's comeback. If you have any information about the number two killer, please call our tip line below. I'm Dan Rubenstein. Good night.